It's the anti-checker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulty. <sighs> so, hey, how's it going, guys? <sighs> Michael G. Crawford, the anti-checker here. Thomas, thank you once again. Man, you, you're too cool. I really appreciate it. And as always, you want to see number four. I now so, pronounce whoops, you man. And number four. Hold on. Hold on. We can't, can't have that. That's darn it. How do I fix that? Uh, let's see, because I can't edit the scene. I just have to try to be quick here with it. I now pronounce you man and turd. Blah, 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 you may blah, not. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Whew. All right. Sorry about that. All right. So you wanted number four, though, because I forgot to turn that one off. So here we go. Sorry about all that. <laughs> and Michael Dunn says in my best Obi-Wan, well, hello there. I obviously do not do a great Obi-Wan. Um, I do enjoy the aquarium. I do enjoy my aquarium as well. I got to say, it helps me relax when I get stressed out. And boy, with my job, do I get stressed out sometimes. Um, but it's nice. The, the, the fish, honestly, mm -hmm. the, the, if you don't have, you know, you don't have to get a big old fish tank. Uh, you can get like a little 10 gallon fish tank for next to nothing. And I highly recommend it, especially if you're stressed out at all. It's really good. Anyway, the, uh, but to you, Thomas, thank you, my friend. And let's see. Why CBS can't use this for STD is this is used by the Walt Disney Company on New York Stock Exchange, except that when you're talking about the title of a show uh, and a stock, completely unrelated, doesn't matter. Um, uh, Ricky Radio says, it's my birthday, mofos, the big 40. Congratulations, Ricky, you have survived 40 orbits around the sun as of today. Good job. You didn't die. Um... <clears throat> Actually, Henry Cav uh, Cavill is never referred to as Superman in the DCEU, according to Laurie Reloaded. Very true. Uh, and yes, that was kind of a sneak peek on the new one, so sorry about that. Um, D. Newton's in the house. Says hello to everyone. Luke is in the house late or early, I guess, for you. Luke, good to see you, my friend. And you want to see the new one. All right, guys, brace yourselves. Um, Bad Wolf is the one to blame for this one he gave a suggestion to joshua and joshua ran with it and this is what he came up with bad wolf and i gonna have a conversation i now pronounce you man and turd you may now kiss joshua what are you doing <laughs> nothing nothing i'm definitely not making you kiss law i repeat i am not making you kiss law i'm definitely not <laughs> so there it is <laughs> oh man so do we get a birthday chat well you're, you're here it's your birthday so it's your ricky's official birthday chat is this chat right here so you know there you go there i even said it in the chat there you <laughs> uh, uh, Sci-Fi says this Hello Anti-Trigger Unleash unlimited power of the nerd rage ranter Modified revenge for the Sith Emperor line <laughs> Oh man I'll tell you I have some serious nerd rage Right now and I'll tell you Why and notice that the name Of this live stream Assuming you got the updated name because the stupid YouTube doesn't update the name until after the, the stupid live stream starts. So that's a whole other issue. <sighs> I'm not going to even get into that one. However, the... Okay, so the name of this live stream is Did Predator Suck? I Have No Clue Film at 11. 
The reason I called it that is because, as some of you know, uh, I posted on Discord a little while back, uh, like, like a couple hours ago, that I may be late doing the live stream today because Mrs. Antitracker and I decided to go out on a date night and go see Predators, or Predator, or whatever. The Predator, however, whatever the name of this one is. And so... We get to the theater, and by the way, we have this beautiful, one of those brand new AMC theaters that's like got all the bells and whistles, reclining seats, uh, really nice place, um, pre, pre-assigned seating so you don't have to, you know, worry about fighting the crowd to get a good seat, just a nice place. And get to the theater, and the show's supposed to start at 7.15, we're sitting there, we got, you know, I have my delicious movie theater drink. And um, we have our delicious Parmesan cheese crisps that they sell at this theater. Anyway, and waiting for it. And then nothing. The show never starts. Uh, they had a problem with the software in the digital projector. And they ended up getting, giving us passes to come back. So I... We wasted a couple of hours of our night waiting for a movie that never happened. I was furious. And I'm sorry, Reality, I didn't update the name there. Uh, you didn't just see it. That, that's the new one. Uh, but let me change the screen there. So now the names are all revealed. But you also threw a couple of bucks in there. And you want to see <laughs> this, this. This horrible, horrible thing. I now pronounce you man and turd. You may now kiss. Joshua, what are you doing? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I'm definitely not making you kiss law. I repeat, I am not making you kiss law. I'm definitely not. <laughs> I do like do like that. For my birthday, can you say Jaffa Cree in the Doomcock voice? What is with you guys? All right, all right, hold on. I'll... You realize that takes me a minute because I got to go over here and turn on the the effects. Uh, time pitch. Pitch shifter. Pitch <laughs> There, here we go. All right, back to normal. But because it's your birthday, Ricky, happy birthday. Andy Checker, if it was a horrible movie in the first place, you would have been even more pissed. That's true. That's true. I would have been, like, after that long delay and then the movie sucked. Oh, man, I would have been really on fire. As it is, I'm just really disappointed because I don't get to carve out that much time to spend with Mrs. Antitrekker. And so we, we actually managed to get out a couple of hours to where we could go squeeze out, see this movie. And nothing. So... Does Super Chat number nine that make your way? Oh, she, I, I know you're joking about that. She thought that was absolutely hilarious when, when Joshua showed it to her. Um, so, um, it was too deep to be Doomcock. Yeah, I know, but I, that's more realistic for if I was trying to be a gold. Um, Mercer just got solo digital and for some reason is celebrating that fact. Movie so bad it crashes the project. I, yeah, I don't know. Because here's the thing. What I've heard from most of the critics that I trust is that overall it's not bad, but the ending kind of sucks. That's kind of the general consensus, consensus that I've gotten from Predator. But I don't know. I don't get to find out because they freaking broke the software and had to reboot the servers and couldn't get it to boot back up and... Now, and the thing is, it's like, well, they gave me a pass to go see any other movie. Great. Well, I paid for this one. I paid for the freaking food. Why don't you give me my money back, too? And then I might be happy. But they don't even do that. All they do is give me a free freaking movie ticket. Look, AMC, if you guys drop the ball like that, the least you could do is refund my money and give me a free movie ticket. I'm sorry. You know, I, I spent, you know, 20 bucks on food alone plus the cost of the tickets. And I'm, and I'm out that because 
even though I can go see any other movie I want, well, all that does is recoup the cost of the tickets. It doesn't do anything for the lost time. It doesn't do anything for the food. I'm pissed. So, and, I, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying AMC generally puts out a bad product as far as the theater-going experience. However, this was a bad experience, and, and they absolutely should have owned up to it. They should have, they should have taken some ownership on that. I, that pissed me off. Um, because they, yeah, they, we were all sitting around in the theater for over an hour before they told us that, sorry, it's not going to happen. Uh, you finally want to answer me new, uh, one, you had to contact me, uh, to, to, you decided to turn the live chat. I, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but, Okay. You should have watched TNG Gambit. I should have, Mercer. I absolutely should have. I should have watched TNG Gambit instead of going out to see Predator. Hello, Anti Trekker. How are you tonight, Anti Trekker? Make note that this uh, that you should watch this cool video on YouTube. It's called Moses tells us exactly how the Nephilim returned after the flood. I, that makes me very nervous, Daniel. That makes me extremely nervous because I have a feeling that it's. Uh, not what I'm expecting. Wow, missed a couple of days and I come back and AMC screws you over. Wow, you've been on a roll. For... <laughs> you... I tell you, it did piss me off. And I know, I mean, it's not its not the end of the world. I mean, first world problems, right? Oh my God, their digital movie projector failed. And now I couldn't be entertained for two hours watching a giant predator running around. You know, I get it. But at the same time, it ju it's just really annoying because of the fact that my schedule is so crazy and we managed to carve out the time to see the movie and then it just all fell apart. Andy Trekker, there should be more Star Wars animations. I want to do my Palpatine Maul and Obi-Wan more. Well, uh, well, we'll talk Palpatine. Or Palpatine. We'll talk George. Uh, Mercer says, does the Wrath of Khan ship Reliant have a deflector dish? From what we see on screen, it does not appear to. Um, which is an interesting point. Uh, that's one of the very few starships, uh, in fact, I think that the Miranda class is probably the only starship we've seen to not have any kind of deflector dish. Um, that's a really, you know, it's funny because the Reliant looks so cool, I just never thought about that, but you're absolutely right. It has no deflector dish. Anti, you can't deduct going to the movies on your taxes, uh, or count as a business loss. I actually, technically speaking, I could if I was doing regular movie reviews. And uh, the thing is, tomorrow I was planning on, like, I even posted on my Twitter, hey, guess what tomorrow's video is going to be about? So I was like, I got some images for Predator together and stuff, and I was all set to just slam out a good movie review in the morning. Now I got nothing. I don't know what I'm going to do for a video tomorrow, because... <sighs> I could just don't go on a rant about AMC. Uh, the the Predator franchise has been a wasted IP for a year. For years, I assume you mean for years. Um, I'll disagree with you on that a little bit. First of all, I like obviously the first Predator is an absolute classic. Predator Two kind of sucked. Uh, Predators I actually really liked, and that was the most recent one. Now AVP I thought was most entertaining, but kind of stupid. And AVP Two was an absolute train wreck. Um, but yeah, Ober class doesn't have one. Um, you're right. Wow. They really dropped the ball, didn't they? I was, I was, I had to stop and picture it, but yeah, I think you're right that the Ober doesn't have one either. That's really bad. Um, bad ship design there. No wonder the Ober dies so much. Um, why didn't you ask for food coupons for the food you spent? Uh, who can eat movie food without a movie to watch? Well, that's the thing. And, and it's like, they, they just gave us these passes and they were saying, hey, it's great because you can see any showing you want, even if it's in 3D. I don't care about 3D. I don't want to see 3D. I want to see this movie right now. And you're not giving anything I didn't already pay for and didn't get. So screw you, AMC. That pisses me off. I don't care if you have the best theater in town. That pisses me off. <sighs> Sorry. I'm, I'll shut up now. Uh, the Miranda class has dual deflectors on the front of the nacelles. Um, the nacelles 
on the Miranda look just like the nacelles on the Constitution refit. So I'm not sure where you're getting that from, Jay. Uh, Mary is in the house. Hey, I hope you are doing well, my friend. Uh, did you? Uh, how are you feeling today? Because I know you've been up and down. So, um, did you know that Michael Dorn played a real person in a Star Trek episode, Willie Mays? Um, no, I didn't know that. Um, I, I assume it was in, an, in one of the baseball <laughs> episodes of TS9, but no, I didn't realize that. Um, but, but I'll tell you, uh, if it is one of the, you know, cause Willie Mays baseball player, if it is one of the baseball episodes of DS9, I hate baseball. So I don't find those episodes compelling at all. Hey, have you seen the new Spider-Man game? I love the new Spider-Man suit. I have seen images from it. I haven't played it yet. I, I would absolutely love to, but I don't have time. Uh, does the USS Anti-Trekker have one? Yes, the USS Anti-Trekker, do I have, I thought I had one right here, yeah, let me see. Uh, on Here is the USS Anti-Trekker, there is indeed a deflector dish right there. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, right there, in the front of the saucer. Um, so yes, the Anti-Trekker does indeed have one. However, the USS Quantum does not. How would you do a sequel to The Predators in 2010? I don't, you know, I wouldn't have gone the general direction of Predators 2010. Um, however, I think that they need to just kind of, I actually liked the idea that we would pick up with those two characters trying to figure out a way to get back home. And they, uh, you know, they, they, they're trying to find a way. Uh, that they have to kind of infiltrate the predators and become go on the offensive. I think that would that would actually be kind of interesting, um, and you know basically have them hunting down the predators one by one. What's the main deflector dish for? Main shield generator. Main. It's a navigational uh, deflector. So with the deflector dish, my understanding is because the deflector shields or the shields just in general are are different. Those are combat devices that you only turn on when you're in combat because they're a huge power strain, and they actually encompass the entire ship. And they're generated depending on the the variant of ship you're on. Like in the the original Constitution, the grid. Uh, that you see on the saucer section is actually the shield generators. But uh, for the deflector dish, that pushes aside uh, debris and stuff uh, when you're traveling at high velocity to prevent them from damaging the ship. But do you hate football? I don't hate football, but I'm not a big football fan. I'm not a sports guy at all, really, reality. Um, when I want a cerebral sport, I don't choose baseball, I choose chess. I'll agree with you there. I, I love playing chess. I suck at it, but I love playing it. And the episode was far beyond the stars where Cisco went, is back in the 50s. Okay. Um, hello, my first... Oh, that's uh, not to me. Uh, all sports are terrible, in my opinion. Well, I wouldn't say terrible, Captain. It's just that I'm not a sports nut. You know, it's, it's fine. Like, I know reality loves, uh, loves his sports stuff, and that's cool. But not me. Mary says, thank you. Feeling okay? It really affects my tummy and appetite, but a few granola bars today and took a little snooze. There you go. Well, you get all the rest you can, and your goal right now is just to get better. Um, I used my head can to explain the Miranda nacelle deflectors uh, because it's blasphemy talking bad about Wrath of Khan, and I really like that ship. Actually, Jay, I mean, that's that. I think it's a valid point. That was a horrible design flaw. Um... <laughs> Uh, Ricky says, my kid is playing the new Spider-Man game on PS4. It looks good, in my opinion. We waited forever for it. Uh, bought it almost two years ago, and they kept pushing it back. Wow. I remember I remember they kept talking about it, and then it kept getting pushed, but I didn't realize it was that long. So, Star Wars thought, why doesn't Yoda do Force Projection in Episode 3 when fighting Palpatine like Luke did in The Last Jedi? Damn you, Ryan Johnson. Yeah, exactly. And Ryan Johnson's crap fest of a film ruins just about everything in um in star wars really it makes it so that almost everything they'd like why didn't they just have a remote piloted ship hyper hyper jump into the death star in for, in a new hope still tired kind of a night owl i get it <laughs> reality says 
chess is a game, not a sport. I will say this, Reality. If bowling is a sport, chess is a sport. I want a good Aliens vs. Predator movie, but in this age of comic book movies, I feel I'll marvel. I don't want a movie. <laughs> I, I get Yeah, I don't think we're going to ever get it. Um, so... Uh, Josh throws a buck into the chat. Thank you so much, Josh. Or you know what that means. Uh, so, and you want to see number nine? Of course you do. Jeez, I knew this one was going to end up being popular. And yeah, I now pronounce you man and turd. You may now kiss. Joshua, what are you doing? Nothing, nothing. I'm definitely not making you kiss law. I repeat, I am not making you kiss law. I'm definitely not. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Junius says, uh, developed an appreciation for sports. You know, here's the thing. I can appreciate the strategy, the athleticism, all that good stuff, but that... I just don't get into watching it as, um, and yeah, that, that, that's the thing. I, I can ab absolutely appreciate it, but it doesn't mean I enjoy watching it. Um, you may not be a sports nut, but you sure, you sure are a crazy Star Trek nut. That is true, Sci-Fi Sith. I will, I will plead guilty to being a Star Trek nut. I guess. Thomas throws another buck ninety nine into the chat. Says the deflector dish is quantum. Very good explanation. Probably the best one all night. New one, please. Of course, you... Jeez. Uh, I really shouldn't have... I, sh I should have made this an Uber chat, but it's too short. I now pronounce you man and turd. You may now kiss. Joshua, what are you doing? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I'm definitely not making you kiss law. I repeat, I am not making you kiss law. I'm definitely not. Although I did talk to Joshua about he needs to make my beard a little bigger because he's still kind of doing it like my beard was still really short like it used to be. Is Monopoly a sport? Um, no. But, so. What's your name on Discord? Oh, to Ricky. <laughs> uh, Airwolf is an art. Um, Airwolf is art in that it's a television series, but I wouldn't call it an art like it's its own form of art. College football is a true start sport because the kids are closest you can get to playing the game for, from the heart. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, just because they're pros doesn't mean it's not a sport and they're not incredible athletes. Uh, it might change some of their motivations, but you know what? Most of those college kids are playing because they want to get drafted. I delivered pizza to someone tonight watching The Last Jedi, LOL. He said he'd never seen it, but he's definitely disappointed so far. Oh, man. I'll tell you, I'd, I'd be like, you know what? You might you, you want you might enjoy more. Why don't you drive up to South Carolina and uh, just enjoy the hurricane for a couple hours? Ed Checker, guess what? I went to Kern, and they sent me to a cool parallel universe. Or CERN, and they sent me to a cool par parallel universe. Uh, did you know that Earth 2, you're an actor, a good one. Wow, that is shocking. That is truly shocking. Philip says, I want a Critters reboot. I heard they were making a TV series. I have not heard about that, but okay. Um, and in Discord, I saw you, oh, you're talking to uh, Captain George about Discord. So, yeah, George is the man with that. Ryan Johnson took a piece of Star Wars Legends Force Power, Force Illusion ability, and used it in a stupid way that killed Luke Skywalker and destroyed his character. Yes, agreed. And and that's a, and the funny thing is the fact that he pulled it out of Legends. Some people say, "See, he does care about the lore." No, he was no. Because I would dare say, even though I'm not an expert on Legends by any stretch, that it was never used in that cowardly a way. Wait until James sees it. Oh man. <laughs> James will probably ask for it all night long. Both Chess and Monopoly are board games. You know what, Reality? You're not going to win this one. Chess is one of the oldest games on the planet. Um, people can get hurt uh, playing Monopoly. That is true. Um, 
What would you pitch for a sequel to Inception? My idea is that someone pays the team to make a guy immortal by sustaining his dreams for as long as possible. Hmm. That's interesting. Thanos and Q having a snap-off. That would make a funny animation. <laughs> well, remember, actually, if you are on Discord, there is a suggestion section for the animations. Uh, and Joshua, my son, actually does monitor that section. And that is where he was talking to Bad Wolf today, uh, who suggested the video you just saw. So, uh, so yes, use that. Reach out to Joshua through the Discord server. That's the best way to... Because uh, he's always saying, Dad, what should I do next? And I'm like, look on the Discord server. Um, Antichecker, I hope you are prepared for Hurricane Florence. I am personally not doing a darn thing, but that's because I'm in Tennessee and we're just expected to get a little bit heavier than normal rain. We're not going to get anything crazy. Um... Unfortunately, the team that I work with at my regular day job, since I work in a virtual uh, team environment, um, half of my team, actually more than half, six out of 11, uh, have already been evacuated from where they live. You're the star of Star Trek Destiny. You're the captain of the USS Destiny, a Nexus class starship. Oh, and the other reality? Okay. Your first officer is lower reloaded. Your mission is to defend the multiverse from evil Emperor Zerg. Well, that's interesting, if a little derivative. Uh, very little mods of contact me. I guess people don't want to keep their wrenches. Well, you know, if they don't want to keep their wrenches, that's okay, man. We'll get rid of them. You just, you know, you know what, what to do, uh, Captain. You send me the, the, the ones to axe, and we'll axe them. But chess is not a sport. A sport requires physical activity. That's why bowling is considered a sport, LOL. Uh, and golf is considered a sport, right? You're old men, if you could be in your 70s and be a world-class golfer, that's not freaking a sport. Pool is considered a sport. Uh, and it's a tabletop game. Uh, did, did to catch a predator suck? <laughs> <laughs> you got me there, your pal Al. Don't know. Uh, for those of you that may have joined after I went on my little tirade earlier, um, the theater had technical problems, and I didn't get to see the movie. And despite spending a bunch of money on the tickets and the food and all that, all they did was give us free passes to come back. So uh, a big F you to AMC today. Um why don't you have a super tiered milking a space cow for blue milk as a super tiered? Well, we kind of have that. If you look at, there's one, uh, oh, and I just realized that the, the list isn't even up. Um, the one that's listed as um, Luke Surprise, number six, is uh, all about the blue milk. Um, so, personally, call Star Trek Discovery Star Trek Diarrhea Diapers. <laughs> Alex and Ali's version three is a sport because it takes four days to finish. And I always uh, play with two dudes that would get drunk, wrestle, or fight before it was over. Uh, that's interesting. Did you, uh, did you see the gas station explosion in Massachusetts? 60 buildings affected one death so far. I saw someone posted about it in Discord, but I haven't, I haven't actually seen the video. Have you ever played golf? It's super hard. I wouldn't consider pool a sport. Well, pool is a sport. It's physical activity, even though it's, but it's almost entirely strategic. And with golf, it's just about technique. That's why you can be 90 years old and be an expert golfer because it doesn't require physical strength. It requires perfect form. Um, the force illusion ability is used by both Jedi and Sith to deceive their enemies uh, by having a phantom projection of themselves. Uh, and and took attack in a different direction. Yeah, I get, I get it, sci-fi. I, I don't know the books or anything, but yeah, and I figured they wouldn't use it the way that Luke did, where he just kind of dodged being in the fight at all. Did the theater refund you? No, they gave us passes to come back. That's it. And so I was horribly disappointed by that. They did not take any kind of ownership on, on ruining our date night. Um... Every mod that has not responded to me about the wrench, you have to do message me on Discord. Discord uh, will be a mod requirement. 
Yeah, so if you have a wrench and you want to keep it, reach out to Captain George on the Discord server. Link is in the description below, plus Captain George has put it in the uh, chat already. But absolutely, reach out to him. Um, uh, number six is not blue or green, it's the brown milk. Well, that's true, but it's making fun of the blue milk. Uh, James Pace Photography is in the house. Says, I don't think that gaming should be considered a sport. Some schools are giving scholarships for playing Fortnite, and that's messed up. That is messed up. Ugh. Mercer says, in Back to the Future, when did, um, when did the Marty that was the most that was in the most of the film merge with the Marty that experienced life with the new version of his parents? That's an excellent question, and we will probably never know the answer to that. Um, and let's see. So I guess this is a bad time to ask for a wrench. <laughs> B unit, the, the official rule now, as far as the wrenches, because I've been put in my place by Captain George, is that what you need to do is reach out to Captain... If you think that you should have a wrench, you need to reach out to Captain George on Discord, not here, on Discord, and then, uh, and then, and you, you'll have to plead your case with him. Uh, Anti-Checker isn't making fun of the green milk. Oh, stop it. It's, it's, it's about the stupid cow thing. Jeez. Pool is a sport you actually get better at it with more alcohol intake. <laughs> um, do you think Aunt Brew did the milking herself for the blue milk in A New Hope? Oh, I think that's, that's Aunt Brew milk. I think that milk came out of Aunt Baru. Um, so there's there's your mental image when Luke's slugging back that blue milk. Uh, one the one aspect of Solo I liked was the making good use of Chewy. I disagree, Mercer, because well, I didn't hate Chewy overall. I hated the fact that he went from ferocious beast to Hanton's best pal in the whole world in about 38 seconds. Uh, do you know a vid where they're talking about how Nephilim were the super smart and they created the genetic uh, abominations of science uh, through science and that's where we get half man, half animal people idea? I've never heard that idea, Daniel. Um... You know, the, thing, the funny thing about the Nephilim is that they're only mentioned once in the Bible, and really the term just means heroes of old. It doesn't necessarily mean half man, half angel, but that's just one interpretation that certain fundamentalists have taken. Um, WTF says B-Unit. Okay. Um, where did you actually went for a date night since there's no movie theater was since two... Two movie theater was a crappy ass night. Where did you actually go for? Well, I, we we sat in the theater for an hour and, and hung out for a little bit, and then we came home and then and we watched um, the first episode of Iron Fist season two. Uh, why blue milk is, is bantha milk? That is not in Alpha Canon, Captain George. That is not in Alpha Canon. They do not say where the blue milk came from. And I think the blue milk came out of Aunt Baru. There's, you can't prove me wrong. Do you think George Lucas was disappointed in The Last Jedi and Ryan Jedi? Oh, I, I would dare say he probably was. In my opinion, the future of Trek hinges on what they do with the new Picard series. This will ultimately decide which direction they will head. Um... In a sense, yes, I would agree that a lot of it hinges on the Picard series, but it also hinges on, are they going to make Discovery good? Um, what are they going to do beyond the Picard series? Because even if they make the Picard series work, they can't just do that and call it a day. So, I don't know. Would Captain Picard milk a space cow? Yes. Uh, did Marty living a life as in as Clint Eastwood inspire the films of Clint Eastwood? You know, that's an interesting <laughs> question. Or could it have changed it to where Clint Eastwood that like, yeah, maybe somebody had heard of this this guy named Clint Eastwood, and so they named their kid Clint Eastwood. Uh, James Peace uh, or Pace says the blue milk comes from Jawa blood. 
Now I still think I still think it's right out of Aunt Beru. Aunt Beru is not human. She just has it looks human with her clothes on. If you if she were to take off her clothes, you would see seventeen teats, and that's where they get their blue milk from. Um, I like a few Predator movies, but they have no continuity. Every movie you discover something that has nothing to do with the last one. That's true. Predator does have a continuity issue, but I don't know what happened in this one because the screw up. What did Lore get wrong today? Well, uh, was he on YouTube today? Because if he was, then he definitely got something wrong. Uh, but I don't know. I haven't. I have not uh, checked out Lore's uh, stuff today. I heard they will go tie the discovery with Prime Timeline through a time travel. The red orbs is the key. I, you know what? There's been a lot of rumors flying about Daniel. I mean, like some people are saying that it's going to actually connect to the Kelman timeline because of the fact that the glowing is red and it's red matter or something like that. And it's Spock and blah, 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 blah. I think that's all just wild speculation at this point. And so I will watch it when it comes out, but I'm not going to buy into any rumors I hear as far as the story is concerned. What if Les uh, personally told true... To Star Trek Discovery, not sure which you mean TUE. What if Les personally told me the Star Trek Discovery writer and producers to try hard to f up Star Trek and Starfleet and the Klingonauts? <laughs> the Klingonauts. Um, I doubt because here's the thing: the it, whatever Les's transgressions, the goal is to make money, and you're not going to make money if the show's a failure. Michael says, I hate it when my mind wanders. One day I wandered into a local mall and bought the bunch of stuff I didn't want and couldn't afford. Well, that does suck. How would Ruin Johnson mess up a Trek movie if he had a chance to direct one? Uh, he'd probably make something an awful lot like Star Trek Beyond. Uh, Picard would uh, plow fields or wine he could handle. Yeah, I, I think Picard would definitely drink the blue milk. Again, he, yeah, he would, yeah, he would drink it straight from the animal just like Luke did. Uh, the He's doing Babylon 5 right now, so he could make it all up and wouldn't know the difference. Yeah. In that video I sent you, how do you think Odin talked to Thor after he died? Um, you're talking about from Ragnarok. Um, well, Odin is just really uber powerful. I mean, they don't they don't really explain how he does it, but... Uh, I don't necessarily, I, I think it's an interesting idea, but I don't necessarily buy that Odin was the original wield or the Infinity Gauntlet. Now, if they do something like that, great, but I doubt it. Iron Wolf asks, what happened at the movie theater, Anti-Trigger? Um, we got there, they had some technical problems, they couldn't get the stupid projector to work. We waited for about a half an hour, they came out said it's going to be a few more minutes. We waited for another half an hour, and then they basically said, sorry guys, it's not going to happen. Uh, so we didn't get to see the movie. Tom Cruise's best scene... Oh, by the way, Iron Wolf, um, and all, all the rest of you guys, especially the commanders there on the Patreon, I, I was curious, what do you guys think of the new credits that I did on the video today? Um, because I, I, the way I kind of made your names merge into each other and stuff, I thought that was kind of cool. Tom Cruise's best scene when he's totally drunk, um, and goes on a rampage and a few good men teaching you typewriter maintenance. The uh, yeah, that was actually yeah, that was a good scene. There's a lot of good stuff in a few good men. Mecca Random is in the house. Good to see you, my friend. Audio's gone. Anybody else? Nope. Looks like you're the only one, Ty. Sorry, buddy. Um, now scientists are saying the black holes are not portals to other universes. White holes are. Well, actually, Daniel, black holes are just. Uh, you know, they're, they're simply collapsed stars where the mass has collapsed to a point where the escape velocity of that mass is greater than 186,000 miles per second, which means that light can't escape. Um, uh, is that a wig, anti trekker Nope. Um... And so, notice he ignored me. Smacked my head. Sorry, uh, Captain. What did I ignore you? Didn't mean to. Um, well, I probably did mean to, but you know, it's you. Uh, only seventeen likes. Wow. Yeah. What's the deal? Forty-four. You guys. Only seventeen. I. I. You know. I wish I had a recording, of Mrs. Anti Trekker. You know. Like, Ooh. Hit the like button. See, I can't do it like she does. So. 
Um, Stallone is working on another Rambo. Uh, no. Could you eat anything with your diet at the theater? Um, not technically, but the wife gave me a cheat day today, but it ended up being a complete waste because, of course, we didn't get to watch the movie. Guess what? I liked G.I. Joe Retaliation, fun comic book movie. It actually, I didn't hate G.I. Joe Retaliation. I thought it was it was all right. Um, didn't didn't love it, but I mean, I thought it was a fun movie. Good popcorn flick. Uh, what is black? What is black holes or fallen angels need timing to be? What? No idea what you're talking about there, Jesse. Uh, Thomas says black hole is racist. Okay. Uh, and reality says bring back the hat. Where? Is, uh, well, the hat is like way over there. It's you can actually, if you if you notice. It's right there, but way back, but I can't reach it from here. Sorry, buddy. Um, Laura did a mini Star Trek Nemesis smear video. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, like your first contact review is only six minutes. Yes. Um, I, I do remember, yeah, he was talking about the scimitar and how it was a uh, stupid overkill. And uh, he didn't like that it had all the, all the bells and whistles. Um, why does a hole have to be black? So tired of racism. Well, you know, you're, you're wrong. Shannon is in the house. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Um, and so all holes matter. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, you can't have water in a movie theater. Well, yeah, I could have water. Well, and actually this, this drink has, you know, this drink is okay on my list because it's uh, mellow yellow zero. Um, Shields, yes. You got two dislikes for your Mrs. Anti Trekker voice. I tell you, I, I, I never claim to be have a sultry voice like Mrs. Anti Trekker. Do you believe that the CIA found Noah's Ark? No. Uh, mainly because the CIA operates within the United States mostly. Um, well, actually, they do work in other countries. But what would they be doing looking on Mount Ararat for Noah's? arc how's work going anti tricker are you getting slammed well today i was actually off from work um tomorrow's gonna be a little crazy uh especially since half my team is still out and you know the hurricane hits full force tomorrow so i'm not expecting to hear from most of them um yeah that's gonna suck can you do a new looney tunes sign off animation the turd coming out of a butt and lisping that's all folks like porky that's really disgusting, John. However, we are working on a Looney Tunes animation. It's going to be freaking hilarious. You guys are going to love it. Uh, it's going to end up probably being uh, Mega Chat number four because it's a pretty involved one. But it's going to be awesome. Uh, we we kind of worked out the concept of it. Uh, Mrs. Antitracker is going to do a voice. I'm going to do a voice. Uh, Mel Blanc is going to do a voice. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Mellow Yellow Zero, I haven't seen that one. How's it? It's actually really good. Um, and so, uh, if you haven't, if, Mellow Yellow Zero is hard to find in stores. Um, you know, you can get them, those Coke machines that you can like mix and match stuff, you can get them out of those. If you go to the no sugar section, you'll usually find it. Uh, black holes matter, black holes are matter. Well, yeah. One of those dislikes is from me because he ignores what is Star Wars canon and ignoring me because I troll. Uh, first of all, how did I ignore what is Star Wars canon? Where in Star Wars canon do they actually say it's Bantha Milk in the film? Because I don't remember hearing that. Or is this something else that I missed? Supermassive pink holes. Ugh. Actually, the CIA is no jurisdiction in the United States. The only, yeah, I, I, you're right, Iron Wolf. I was getting confused. I was For some reason, I was thinking about the FBI, and yeah. Screwed that one up. I'm tired. Uh, didn't lose my mind. I sold it on eBay. I hope you got a lot of money for it. Hit the turd, Jack. Don't come back. <laughs> Andy Checker, everyone hates Star Trek Nemesis. How do you feel about it? Um... I don't hate it. Um, I, I feel like, you know, and it's, there, there's a lot to pick apart in that movie. It might be worth doing a review of it eventually, but do I hate it? No. 
uh, I think that's an overstatement. I would just say that, like, unfortunately, all the next-gen movies are subpar. Anti-Trekker uh, hates Star Trek Nemesis. Oh, I just read that. CIA is still hiding the existence of the Stargate program. It's so deep that they made a cover TV show about it. Is that where the show came from? Okay. That would be funny. Um, Anto as an anti trekker out hit the turd. Huh? Um, later, folks, been away for 96 hours. Admiral, get some freaking sleep. That's not good. Canon is more than the film. Captain? I know you want to you wanna believe that. I, I do. And I get it. Like, you can say, oh, they officially say what? A I don't care. If it's not in the film, I'm not going to sit there and read a book or a comic book or watch a cartoon in order to grab the context of a film. It's a film franchise. Get over it. And you know what? Same goes with Star Trek. I'm not going to, you know, like, for example, there have been some awesome Star Trek novels that have dealt with certain technological issues that we don't think about. Like, what are the origins of the Doomsday Machine? What was its purpose? Stuff like that. What really happens if you hit Warp 10? All sorts of interesting things have been dealt with in the novels that don't count because they're in the freaking novels. And I don't care if it's, you know, it's like I have the original Starfleet technical manual from 1975. It's an awesome book. And, but, you know what? If it's not on screen, it's not canon. Sorry. Uh, I only hated the Troy stuff in Nemesis. Yeah, the Troy stuff I didn't particularly care for. I think near or near. Uh, I think that uh, Shinzon was an interesting concept. Um, I I also didn't like the the B four arc very much. Um, but uh, I, I I disagree with lore as far as the. Um, the, uh, the the scimitar, I don't think that the scimitar was a horrible, horrible ship because it's okay to give the villains an OP ship. In fact, you should give the villains an OP ship compared to the heroes. I like Nemesis. The Remans made one massive anti-Borg ship. All your eggs in one basket, so of course it's a powerful ship. Well, and, and the well, the Remans built that ship specifically to take over. That was my interest. Well, or did they say it was an anti-Borg ship? I don't think they said that, did they? I have to rewatch it now. I can picture Captain George angry typing. Yes, I love I love when Captain George gets angry. Uh, I want to believe that Lucasfilm, the company that makes the movie, says so, and it's not just the film fan and most of those content books movies. I don't care, Captain. I don't care. I'm not going to read a book and say, "Well, that's how it works." If it's not on screen. It's, you know, it, and, and I understand it, the books should be an augmentation to the universe, but it, they are not, you know, if you want to make the books canon, then why is it that they, that they never, you know, except for, oh, we'll throw a name drop here and there just so all the fanboys will get all nerdgasmed about it. But then why don't the books have any real impact on what happens on screen? You know, why don't the animated shows have any real impact on what happens on screen if it's all canon? Uh, the D went past Warp 10 where no one has gone before. Data stated it. Um, did they say they passed Warp 10? Or did they? Because I think Data just said it's off the scale. But the scale couldn't possibly read Warp 10. Um... Sci-Fi Sith says, Andy Tricker, when is the Star Trek versus Star Wars debate with Captain George coming? It'll be an interesting debate. I don't know. We're gonna, we have to work on some of the rules because obviously Captain George, because of the ridiculous amount of canon for Star Wars, is going to want to try to say, well, I can use all the official novels and all. But that's, you know, I, I don't think that that is... Uh, setting up for any kind of fair debate because as far as what we see on screen and what they say in the novels, there are direct contradictions. And I mean, if you look at the power level of Imperial weapons in the movies versus the books, then if you read the books, the Empire has like any, any ship has like these planet busting weapons. They can shoot for, you know, light years at a time. They're like this uber all powerful force. Then you look in the movies and it's like they got a range of 60 kilometers at best. 
Um, real impact. We just learned how Vader's castle is being created in the comics. How is that a real impact? Oh, yeah, because... Oh, yeah, there's nothing. Sorry. Because that's where one scene took place in Rogue One. And it wasn't a critical scene. And the fact that they were in Vader's castle is irrelevant to the scene. They could have literally had that scene anywhere. They did say warp 13 and all good things. So was that a new warp scale? Um, is it me or does there seem to be a general lack of hyper excitement about episode 9? I don't know. I don't care. Nobody cares right now. Um, uh, so, and of course, Mecca is going to abandon us because Doomcock dropped a video on Patreon. Like, she can't watch that after the live stream. I see how it is, Mecha Random. Oh. Yeah, he said they went past Warp 10. Afterwards, they never exceeded Warp 1.4. Uh, yeah, but, you know, and, and, and that's the thing. When you have these kind of weird contradictions, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just... I have a problem with it. I, I I think writers need to be more careful of that. And then if they do have a contradiction, then yeah, we, we're left trying to sort it out. Can we officially call you sci-fi remakes of and how to fix it series videos? Michael J. Crawford presents turd polishing. That's not bad, John. That is not bad. I might have to do that. Oh, man. Uh, did you know that the energy be, uh, being in Star Trek V was a banished Q? It took three or four Q to banish the one from Star Trek V because he's he was OP. Daniel, that is not canon. That's an interesting idea, but that is not canon. Eight weeks, sir. But if you don't have eight weeks, I'll do it for you in two. Okay, bad example. Oh, sir. Sure, yeah. We learn the mo You don't have to do all caps, Captain George. We learn the moment when Vader... We won't learn the moment when Vader learned that Luke was his son in the Star Wars comics. And again, irrelevant. All, you know, what we know? We know that by Empire Strikes Back, Vader knows who Luke is. Is that, does it matter if it happened 20 years before or 20 minutes before? No. Does not affect the story. In TOS, by any other name, we were able to travel to, by at Warp 11. Yes, but in TOS, the warp scale was going... You know, and that's the funny thing. In TOS, uh, I believe we had ships attack them at, like, Warp 14. Um, in the animated series, I think they actually got into the 20s in the warps. And, and, if, and if you look at the uh, gauge on the USS Excelsior from Star Trek 3, uh, I believe it went all the way up to, like, Warp 72. So... There's definitely some problems with the whole Warp 10 thing. but And so most of us fans have pretty much accepted that there's a different Warp scale in the next generation than there is from the original uh, series era. However, there's nothing in canon to really nail that down. Um, the Star Trek V question I want answered is, where did Cybok get a haircut just before they go to the surface of God's planet? Well, on the ship barbershop, of course. Jeez. Liger fan, come on. Waspinator is in the house and says Discovery for life because Waspinator is a jerk. Um, and so in Empire Strikes Back, the Emperor says that Luke Skywalker is the offspring of Anakin Skywalker. That is when Vader learns that he has a son. Well, and actually, even in because even in the special edition, I get the feeling that Luke already knew that. Uh, or, I mean, that, that Vader already knew that. Because, um, but even if that is, if that is the case, you know, yeah, it doesn't change the, the story. That's the problem. What you're talking, you know, if, if you want it to be canon, George, you have to show where something can't work without that as a source. Um. DS9 for life. <laughs> mm. 
Must have been Starfleet Supercuts because it was fast. Yeah, well, you know, the, you, when you can use a phaser to cut your hair, it is pretty quick. The USS Excelsior never existed, according to Laura. That's very true. Picard versus the Emperor in a political arena. Uh, we've talked about that before. Um, Picard is not weak-minded, so he wouldn't be easily influenced by the Emperor. Um, however, the problem is, is that if they're debating and they're trying to convince people of something, the Emperor has the cheat of the Force, where Picard does not. If the Emperor has to go without using the Force, so if they're trying to talk to a, an entire hall of strong-minded individuals that are not easily duped by the dark side, then I would give it to Picard. However, if the Emperor gets to use the Force and the people are not particularly strong-willed, then it's got to go to the Emperor. In TOS, they went over uh, Warp 11. In Let That Be Your Last Battlefield, but... In Let That Be Your Last Battlefield, yes. But Voyager said that they went to Warp 10. as the fastest continuity error in Mandela effect. Well, the, the, that's what we're talking about there, Daniel. Is that the, the, there's no official explanation that, as to why Warp 10 became infinite speed in the next-gen era. Uh, even even though they, and they even broke that a couple of times, like in All Good Things, is a great example. But uh, but generally, they say warp ten is infinite speed from the first episode of TNG onward. Um, however, in the original series, all the way up through Star Trek VI, uh, traveling faster than warp ten was just another number. And so, it would it would seem that the scale has changed, and most fans have accepted that there was some kind of change in the warp scale. Lore actually did a good video on it, the even though. Uh, he, it's the video where he makes one of his worst errors where he says that they never said trans warp in Star Trek 3. But overall, the concept of the video is a good one, is that maybe the trans warp drive experiment of the Excelsior was successful, and because warp speed suddenly became exponentially faster, they had to come up with a new scale of speed. I can already guess the terms of this debate with me and anti Trek. He's going to limit me to on-screen only and have Star Trek win 100% of the time due to his ignorance. I'm just going to make a video instead. Wow, Captain, you're just grumpy today. First of all, uh, why, okay, If here, here's the thing. If you want to say that, for example, let's talk about weapons for a second. I, and I don't know, I don't I haven't read a lot of the books or anything like that, but I'm pretty sure that if you scour through the, the, the stuff that you consider canon that is not films, you will find all sorts of uber-powerful mega death ray weapons that can hit the Enterprise from 17 light years away and pulverize entire star systems and all that crap. Problem is, we never see that. Even when the Emperor is fighting for, uh, you know, fighting for its the elimination of the Rebellion. They bring in, what? what how many Star Destroyers at the Battle of Endor? Um, that was the Imperial Fleet. They never, ever show this huge, massive arsenal of Imperial weapons on screen in the films. And even the First Order, while they had more ships, their best weapons... Aside from the planet-busting weapons, which were only on the Dreadnought, apparently, not even on the frickin' uh, Supremacy, only had a max range of some 60 kilometers. Um, so, I'm sorry, but if they have these massive uber weapons, why don't they use them in the most important battles of all? It makes zero sense. Sorry. Uh, Riotti says, Lore made an error during a Star Trek review, Anti-Trekker? No way. Yeah, it has happened. They made it up because they thought it sounded cool. Yeah. That's that's ultimately all it is. And But the problem is, is that you can't, uh, you know, you, but then you went on to, you have to create continuity. If you don't, you break the universe. And the fans love continuity. Um... Don't forget the point about Palpatine. He is use of po political control to see. To, uh, he uses. He, huh. Is he use politics to control his enemy? Wow, uh, without they knowing. So Picard would be dealing with an enemy that presents himself as a friend. That's true too. Uh, if it ain't filmed, it's kind of wibbly wobbly canon. Yeah, I would tend to agree, Liger. 
Lore never makes a mistake, according to Lore. <laughs> New Picard series to feature Metamorph, says the creators. Um, okay, Dave, I don't know where you're getting that, but okay. I'm not sure why I wrote Palatine. That's, that's cool, man. Don't worry about it. I'm a horrible speller, so I probably wouldn't have noticed. The Sun Crasher sucked. Don't know what the Sun Crasher is. Because Ryan Johnson is a bad writer, though, well, there is that. All aliens become tards once they encounter humans. It's the movie way. Well, apparently that's true. And Trigger, what? You like exaggerating your point, do you? Throughout canon, everything is very consistent with what we see on screen. It's just numbers and material I wanted to use. Okay, so if everything is consistent except for the numbers, right? So so the Empire, basically, their only type of star sh starship is the Imperial Star Destroyer, various forms of TIE fighters, and that those shuttles. That's all they've got, because that's all we see them use. And these ships have a maximum weapons range of maybe 60 kilometers. They have no planet-busting abilities whatsoever. They fire standard turbo lasers, and that is it. That's what we see on screen. Now, if you want to say that, well, they can bombard planets and completely and, and fire 50 gigaton ordnance and stuff, it's it, that's nowhere to be seen. That's where I have a problem. Now, if you want to concede that and say, well, that's all true, fine. You want to say you have 10,000 starships as opposed to 20, fine. They're a big spread out empire. I could buy that. Um, but... I, I'm not going to buy that they had all these massive weapons capabilities that they just chose not to use when the entire rebellion was uh, caught in a pincer movement at Endor. The giant triangle might take one or two starships before phasers and photon torpedoes. Actually, no, Jay, and that's the problem. And this is, and I know Captain George and I, are, well, we, see, that's the problem. If, we, if I start getting into it, then we'll end up getting into the debate. But, no. The, that's the problem. The Federation ships are completely invulnerable to Imperial attack. There are many, many more cruisers and uh, Imperial Star Destroyers. Have you not seen Rebels? Oh, wait. Yeah. If it's Then where were those cruisers uh, that, or whatever, because Imperial Star Destroyers, according to Han Solo and A New Hope, are cruisers. However... Uh, where are these cruisers at the Battle of Endor, the most important battle that the Empire ever faced? They didn't bother to bring any? Um, I would just go with Chakotay uh, than Picard. He's just as good at diplomacy and is more personable. Well, he is more personable than Picard, but I would not say Chakotay is just as good at diplomacy. I think that's an exaggeration of Chakotay's abilities. Do you think the Picard series will be titled Star Trek The Next Crash? <laughs> no, I don't know what they're going to call it, but uh, I don't know. Sun Crasher was from, was from a Star Wars old EU book that was smaller than an X-Wing uh, that could destroy a star. Of course it was. I'm so mad that my grammar sucks. That's all right, Captain. Just relax. Breathe. It's cool. We're friends. Um, Philip says the reason Star Trek will always beat Star Wars in a war is the ability of the Federation to teleport stuff and people. That is definitely an advantage, but that's not the key. Uh, unfortunately, Captain George already knows what I think the key is, but uh, I, I think that I don't think that there's any way around it. And just saying that they have a whole lot of Star Destroyers isn't going to fix that. Uh, Disney says Mickey ain't a mouse. Well, he must be a rat then. Um, and Salacious Crumb versus BB-8. Um, well, BB-8 seems to be, you know, BB-8 has the ability to, without limbs, can grapple and tie up multiple large trained guards. So I would have to go to BB-8. He's like ridiculously OP. The Klingons, Romulans, Federation, have as many ships as the Empire, not counting all the other Star Trek species ships. I, I doubt that, to be honest with you, because I want to give credit, you know, because I know Captain George is about to bust a vein here. But let me, let me give him some, some credit here as far as that's concerned. If the Empire is truly a 
uh, controls a majority of the galaxy. Assuming that the Star Wars galaxy is an average size galaxy and that the Milky Way galaxy is an average size galaxy, then they have to have tens of thousands of ships, right? They would have to outnumber the Federation and the Klingons and the Romulans. Um, however, that's not going to, but the problem is, is that in every engagement, they're going to lose. And so that's, that's where they're going to run into a problem. It's not numbers. Uh, the Empire definitely has the advantage in numbers. What the Empire may be able to do is launch an effective, like if you were talking war between the Empire and the Federation, like somehow the two galaxies got mushed right next to each other and the Empire was just going to full, do an all-out invasion. If they brought their entire Imperial force in as one solid blitzkrieg into federation space and i mean i mean every single one of those tens of thousands of star destroyers and they just started hammering every planet they came across and obliterating it completely they would take out a few planets they absolutely would they may even get to earth however they're not going to be able to stop this they're not going to be able to stop the actual starships um that it's it and that's that's the problem is that the star trek weapons and the star trek uh drive systems and everything will just make it impossible for the federation to lose a battle unless the empire suddenly adapts federation technology which you know theoretically they could do now, if you want, but then if you want to start throwing a cheat in there and say, well, Darth Vader can use the Force, well, then I'm going to say, well, so can Captain Kirk. And, uh, and by the way, you know, let's see Darth Vader stop the Borg, if you, if you really want to go all out. But I don't think that as far as the technology is concerned, they're not even, I mean, they're, they're nowhere near the same level. They're both very cool. They're my two favorite sci-fi franchises of all time. And I've enjoyed both of them. Well, I, I enjoyed Star Wars since its inception in 1977. And I've enjoyed Star Trek since 1968. So I've enjoyed them both for a very, very long time. That being said, I've never thought that the technology was on the same scale. Federation technology is always shown to be way more advanced than what we see in the Empire. That doesn't change the fact that the Empire is ridiculously cool. And so that's, and, but the problem is, and, and, and I think Captain George is unfortunately a victim of this, is that we tend to be, we, we tend to think, well, if my side loses, that means my side sucks. No. Um, Riverbank prefers BSG over Star Wars. Well, and here's the thing. I love BSG. Uh, especially the, the the reboot BSG. I love it to death. But they would lose a fight against either one of them. I know we need to talk, Captain. I just need time. So give me some time. Um, who's the better robot, uh, Android Data or R2-D2? Well, what do you mean by better? Um, data would, I mean, I would tend to think data. Data is a completely sentient, independent being, where R2-D2 is simply a robot that follows its programming. But the, you know, and I know Captain George will get, is probably busting a, a vein right now when I said that. But I do not believe that droids are sentient. Sorry. Um course i don't really believe data is either he just imitates uh life better um what if empire uses both death stars with star killer base and the mass of their fleet to defend themselves and start picking off uh track star systems they would definitely get a few star systems taken out doing that however here's the problem um the death star would last for all of one engagement then it will be taken out it will not be hard Keep in mind that, like, all... Do you remember the, the Death Star plans in the, in the first film? And, of course, then retconned in Rogue One a little bit. The Death Star plans, the Federation get just by getting within a light year of the Death Star. 
all they got to do is get within a light year, but scan the dang thing. And then, okay, uh, there's an exhaust port we need to target. And the targeting systems that they uh, that they have on, on Trek are way more accurate than anything they have in Star Wars. And if you don't believe me on that, just look at the percentage of hit shots. Um... <laughs> Captain George, I lost so many veins in my eye, I'm not a bloodshot. <laughs> well, d d just relax, man. We don't have to keep fighting about it. Uh, Star Destroyers with a warp nacelle. That would be one hell of a sea. <laughs> Star Destroyer with a warp nacelle. That would be an interesting concept. But uh, that's not what the, the biggest problem is. The biggest problem with the Star Destroyers are turbo lasers. Honestly, that's the biggest problem. And no, I'm not saying, oh, they're lasers. Because I understand that, tur even though it's not really an alpha cannon, uh, I understand that turbolizers are superheated plasma, and they use a laser to heat the plasma. I get that. Um, that being said, so I, and I would accept that. The, the turbolasers are a plasma-based weapon. And plasma-based weapons, we know, can, in fact, affect... Uh, the Federation. Um, and so the uh, and, and Captain George says the key to your debate is the range of Federation weapons. However, you're forgetting how the Federation conducts warfare. The Federation conducts it like naval ships very close up. That's true. The Federation does tend to get cl up close and personal in their major engagements. That being said, Against a Star Destroyer, they would say, okay, we need to keep our distance. Because it seems like they have very short-range weapons. And 60 kilometers is not... I mean, go back and... I mean, the, 60 kilometers is not a long distance. It really isn't. Uh, 60 kilometers is still well within transporter range. And uh, so... There, I, I really don't think that the that the Federation is going. Once they realize that their that their window is sixty kilometers, and that's assuming there has been no improvement in turbo lasers from the time of the Empire to the time of the First Order. Um, assuming there's been no improvement in turbo lasers whatsoever, then we'll just stick with sixty kilometers as their max range. If that's the case, it would be absolutely cake for them to stay sixty kilometers away. Um, the Death Star has over 100,000 weapons and placements besides the super laser. Yes, with short range and, uh, which would be, in, so it would be ineffectual. And it really, it truly would. And that's the problem. Um, Thomas throws 9.99 into the chat. Thank you so much, Thomas. And says the United Federation plans will make an alliance with the rebel scum. The United Federation plans doesn't invade other galaxies, so the Empire has to come here. The Empire won't know anything about the Trek galaxy. That's true, but yet, and that's where we would have to kind of look at what is the scenario we're trying to play out, because it would be highly unlikely. You know, the Federation obviously wouldn't is not an aggressive uh, military force, so. If the Empire was going to invade the Federation, um, that gives you something interesting to work with because the Empire does have the advantage of numbers, I'm not, and I would definitely grant that. But I think that the Federation technology would ultimately uh, win the day. And so, Thomas, you know <laughs> you get to pick anything you want there all, all the way through the mega chat, so you tell me what you want. Uh, Mecha Random is back after watching Doomcock's video. Traitor. I'm sure it was a good video, though. You know, it's Doomcock. It usually is. Akani has no chance against an Imperial Star Destroyer. Uh, well, maybe if the captain of Akani is stupid and stays within 60 kilometers, you would be right. Um, that, But that's the problem, is that you... Um, well, Captain, and, and I'm not trying to tie your hand on your back, but you can't, you, 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 basically, I don't see how you can get around the range issue. Um, and so, I understand, Mecca, I'm not mad. Uh, but I, I really, Captain, uh, I, I really don't, I don't see a way around it. I mean, I'm just trying to think from a strategic perspective, 
if you consider the superiority of impulse drive over standard thrusters in Star Wars, if you consider the uh, superior uh, the superiority of Federation sensors sensing technology, and uh, the fact that they would be able to very quickly analyze that the weapons are short range, then it's game over. All they got to do is stay at least 60 kilometers away. Now, the only thing you could do is try to argue that somehow the Imperial Star Destroyers can outrun a Federation starship at sublight, which I don't think you're going to be able to do. Um, and because there's nothing to suggest that Star Destroyers are that fast. Uh, uh, you know, hyperspace is definitely faster than warp drive. But, and this is another problem if you're trying to do an invasion scenario, they would not have the hyperspace routes in the Milky Way galaxy mapped out. So they wouldn't be able to even use hyperspace. Thomas says, because Ensign George likes it. <laughs> Ensign George. Oh, mega chat number one. That was, oh man, that was cruel. Helps if I click on the right button here. Of course, now the computer wants to be sluggish. Bear with me. I may have a sh It's not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean sh Take the bloody sh Is so wrong. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, did Mecha Random, did you see the new one? Um, some people seem to love that one. Oh, did I? Uh, no, I, I may have a Clear that. Okay. Um, so, thank you so much, uh, Thomas. I truly appreciate it. So Philip says, but anti-tracker. <laughs> Bubba when it starts like that. But anti-tracker. Star Wars took place a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So the technology would be a lot more advanced by the time they encounter the Federation. Well, except that what we would have to do, if you're going to do any kind of straight-up fight uh, scenario, is come up with an ex... Um, an excuse to cross the time gap. So there was a time vortex, like a wormhole that went to a galaxy far, far away and also went back in time to a long time ago. 
Um, otherwise, yeah, you, you'd be right. Although, maybe not, because at least in 30 years, the technology in Star Wars doesn't seem to have advanced at all. Now, Thomas throws a buck 99 and wants to show Mecca the new one. All right, Mecca, I hope you're watching, because here it comes. I now pronounce you man and turd. You may now kiss. Joshua, what are you doing? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I'm definitely not making you kiss law. I repeat, I am not making you kiss law. I'm definitely not. <laughs> and bad wolf gamer is the inspiration for that and of course he or not bad wolf Gamer, bad wolf whatever he calls himself bad wolf and he's not even here <laughs> you get to see what your wedding with now that's not nice josh because you know ra uh, random is definitely not a turd so that that was not nice for you to say that um so what did you think mecca the the uh the latest and greatest in super chat rewards um Everyone's still waiting for that. I know you are. And, and you know, the problem is, and, and honestly, reality, where I'm at right now is I'm just trying to find the right music for it. Once I get that down, I'm going to have it ready for you. Um, Anti-Trekker. So some sort of rip in space time happens in the Tholian web. And yeah, exactly. Um, Laura is going to propose with an onion ring like in The Simpsons. That could be, yeah. Antitrek, you're just a stand-in for random. I would be an extremely ineffectual stand-in for random. Um, so, no, I am not a stand-in for random. Random is needs no stand-in. Um, but, yeah, I think that... I think the range issue is, is the death knell for it. I really do, Captain. And... I, we do need to talk about it one of these days when we have some time to kill, because I think it will be fun. Uh, it's just a matter of scheduling said time. That's uh, It's such a challenge for me, and I'm I'm truly sorry about that. Ricky Radio says, give me birthday subs. Wow, Ricky. Or random stunt double. How could I possibly be random stunt double? Double. Double. Um... First of all, hair is the wrong color. Second of all, last time I checked, Random does not have an insanely long goatee. Um, third of all, uh, no, no boobs. I mean, you know, it just doesn't work. Other than that, sure, we're exactly the same. <laughs> uh, Ty says, the new Super Chat is funny, but your beard's not long. You know, it's funny you should say that because Mrs. Antitracker said the exact same thing to joshua when we looked at it enderman is here enderman of doom is here everybody so wait we got to check that head probe Welcome, Enderman. It's always good to see you. It says, let's all be honest. Even if they destroy Star Wars and Star Trek wholly, and even if they start targeting the MCU, we've still got the amazing uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh, and hi. Yeah, but, you know, you do realize they're doing a new Middle Earth series on, like, Amazon Prime, right? So, yeah, we'll see. Um... The thing that brought Howard T. Duck to Cleveland in the sem seminal film Howard the Duck could link the realities of Star Trek and Star Wars. Well, I've never seen Howard the Duck, so I don't know. But I'll take your word for it. CG could turn you into random? That would take a lot of CG, I will tell you. Uh, you know, because, ran you know, I, I don't mind admitting, you know, random looks a lot better than I do. So... But then again, I'm a heterosexual male, so of course I'd think that pretty much any woman looked better than me. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't the Empire keep a Force user or two? Well, the problem is, and, 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 I, and I did mention this before, is that if you want to try to invoke the Force, then that means, so you're going to use hero characters such as Darth Vader and the Emperor... 
But that would mean that the Federation could also use hero characters. And in Plato's stepchildren, we find out that Kirk can replicate the Force. And so, not going to help. Also, only movie I'm really looking forward to that's coming as soon is Godzilla King of the Monsters. I am looking forward to Godzilla King of the Monsters. I think that's going to be a fun movie. Uh, but that's not the only... I mean, I, I'm looking forward to Captain Marvel. I'm looking forward to Infinity War. I'm, lo I'm, I'm looking forward to Halloween. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot... There's, there's movies I'm looking forward to. Do you think Marvel can make a good Howard the Duck film? I think they could. In fact, if you look at the, the, the two clips of... That, that Howard the Duck showed up in so far uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes, I absolutely think they could pull off a Howard the Duck film. Reality points out that I'm a heterosexual white male. That's true. That makes me doubly evil. Remember, in Spaceballs, they captured the stunt doubles. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Um, in fact... I got to say, one of my favorite stunt double scenes was in Mirror, Mirror. Um, overall, we all know Mirror, Mirror, classic episode of the original series. But has one of the most laughably bad stunt doubles in all of cinematic history. And you know what? Because I care so much about you guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it right now before we sign off. Because I just love it. For Halloween, you can dress up for the live stream. Okay, well, um, you're going to buy me a costume? Because, you know, you, you guys haven't been particularly generous today, except for Thomas. Don't don't get me wrong, Thomas. I do appreciate it. So, you know, you got to buy me a costume if you want me to dress up. And I'm still amazed that the Balrog from Lord of the Rings looks millions of times better than almost any of the modern CG. Oh, yeah, the Balrog in... Uh, man, I, I remember when that movie came out on DVD... Uh, man, I watched the Balrog scene over and over and over. It was so freaking awesome. And I hated the fact that wasn't it just wasn't there enough. All right, science fiction, Star Trek, the original series. And now I got to remember what... Oh, quick, what season was Mirror, Mirror... Uh, let's see. Uh, it was yesterday. In the dark. And mercies. Spinal tap. How'd that get in there? Um, we used to dress up and submit them on Discord. Winner gets a USS Quantum or anti trigger. That's not a bad idea. I think we will do that. We will have a, uh, a, uh, discord costume contest so you post a picture of yourself in costume of course how do we prove it's you i know you have to have a picture that says that uh you're a subscriber to anti-trekker on in like you're holding something in the picture that shows it uh oh man enderman you just made me think i i told the wife this earlier today you may appreciate this i told the wife that I was going to, uh, was it in season two? For some reason, I thought it was in season three. Uh, let me go to season two. Uh, yep, you're right. Season two, episode four. Um, but uh, real quick, Enderman. So here's what I was going to do. is I was telling her, okay, here's what I want to do. Wear some chinos, a sweater vest, shirt and tie, and then get a long white wig, carry a staff with a glowing tip, in one hand and a math book in the other one and hand out pop quizzes to everybody I see and say, you shall not pass. I seriously wanted to do that for Halloween. And Mrs. Antichecker looked at me like I was like so stupid. Um, losing my Star Trek. I, I, you know what? That's unfortunately it's a side effect of getting old. Uh, it truly is. All right, so let's find the scene here. Right, hold on, hold on, almost there. Oh, I had it on the screen for a second. All right. 
right, guys, so I'm going to show it here. Uh, bear with me. I know I look like an idiot when I'm looking up at that screen. All right, so classic scene from Mirror Mirror. Uh, there is, of course, me as Mr. Spock. Uh, and so let's... Answers. All right. Notice Lieutenant Uhura. And that, these are the stunt doubles. Do any of these people look even... Does this look like Scotty to you? Does this look anything like when you see Uhura? Let me look at the but look at the the rolls of fat on Uhura, and who is this guy that's supposed to be Doctor McCoy? I mean, look at that! Oh man, this is like so freaking bad. I just, I mean, that lieutenant, whoever that is, is the stunt double for Lieutenant Uhura. What were they thinking? What were they thinking? Were they seriously saying, you know what? I know you weigh 50 pounds more than Nichelle, but, you know, hey, why not? You got a similar skin tone. And then, okay, so you see, there's Nichelle. All right, okay, so look at Nichelle there. And now look at that. How can you even say that that is the same person? So, yes, I, I love that fight scene. When, when I was a kid, I thought that was like one of the greatest fight scenes ever. And then when I saw it, it was like, wow. Um, the, the, yeah, the Star Trek stunt double. But here's the funny thing is the reason that... You know, people say, oh, people were just so stupid back then. No, they really weren't. The problem was that the um, if you look at television sets from the 1960s, uh, <laughs> you could not tell the difference because the picture you were looking at was so fuzzy. And so I remember growing up as a kid watching that, watching that and I had no idea that that was not the same two people. Um and in fact, another one that I really love uh, is the fight between Khan and Kirk in Space Seed is equally horrendous. Um, and in fact, I remember, uh, uh, I think it was uh, SF Debris said that, uh, you know, and then Khan and Kirk begin to fight. Meanwhile, two other people begin to fight in a very similar room because... They don't look anything like each other. Um, and yeah, that's a little beyond the magic of Hollywood. The funny thing is, is that if you, um, you know, nowadays they do a much better job of it. But part of the improvements nowadays is the ability to digitally place the actor's face on there. And of course, you still have, you have some actors, so like, like Tom Cruise, that's like, I'm going to do my stunts. I don't care if I break my foot. And, you know, that's, I got a lot of respect for Tom Cruise. Kirk losing his shirt to the rock monster is pretty great. <laughs> Kirk loses his shirt like more times than just about anybody else in television history. Yeah, 60s televisions used four prime colors if you had a good set. Yeah, and they were very low resolution. The 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 uh, the picture was always like there was never any crisp clear edges. Everything was very fuzzy. And so it was easy, like you, those fat folds on Uhura's stunt double, you never could have seen. And the only reason we can really see them that clearly now is because of the remastered versions. And wait, was that Galaxy Quest? No, that was indeed the original series. Um, and that is a funny thing, though, about, you know, with, with the original series is that, yeah, those stunt doubles were bad. The OST that I dislike is a group of kids who are trying to control uh, the ship. Oh, yeah, that was called the And the Children Shall Lead. That was an absolutely horrendous, horrendous episode. Um, it was, yeah, it was just bad. Um, I, yeah, I did not care for And the Children Shall Lead one bit. Uh, the other one was um, The Way to Eden. Oh, oh, that was horrible. All right, so now let's see if we can find another 
awesome, awesome fight scene. Because why not? We're talking about fight scenes today. Alright, here we go. And so, one of the greatest fights of all time, of course. Uh, Enderman says, am I going to answer your question? Oh, who is the greater creator? Gene Roddenberry, George Lucas, uh, Terry Pratchett, or J.R.R. Tolkien? J.R.R. Tolkien. Sorry, Enderman, didn't see it. Um, I would definitely go with Tolkien. Um, don't get me wrong, I love Star Trek. But, yeah. So, here we have Khan... Uh, Ricardo Montalban himself preparing for Kirk, knowing Probably he's honestly, coming. And I don't know if you could see that just now. Let me go back, see if I can get 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 it to go back. I suspect this is Scott, captain's headed for. Okay, let's see. The engineering section. I'll follow in case. Negative. We must protect the. All right. Look carefully here. Uh, look very very carefully, and you will see the shadow of a crewman. Uh, crewman not meaning someone from the ship, but crewman meaning someone working on the behind the scenes. Uh, go by here. Watch very, very carefully. Vessel by the Anna. Right there. You see, right here is the head of one of the crew working on the set. These are last. Meet me. I love that. I, I absolutely love that. And so, the you know, of course, here clear. comes Kirk. First. Big fight a coming, right? So we got we got Khan and Kirk gonna Fuck duke him. it out. First, of course, we brought him off on us to show he's super, super strong by breaking the phaser. Guess we don't really need the sound up. That just makes it more likely that I'll get DMCA'd. Um, oh, it's a ghost. Oh, okay, I didn't realize Thomas. It's just a ghost. Uh, and so yeah, so he breaks the phaser with his bare hands. Very impressive. Uh, if you think about it, Khan is ridiculously strong. He's five times the strength of a normal human being. Uh, so, they're, of course, about to duke it out. Alright, so here we go. You ready for this? Ready for Kirk and Khan duking it out? Oh, wait, not quite. They're, they're, they're fighting over the, they're, they're arguing about the overload that's about to happen. And you can see, besides the fact that Khan, we know Khan is like five times stronger than a normal human, but look at the size of Ricardo Montalban compared to William Shatner. He was well cast in this part. He is very physically imposing uh, if you compare the two. Uh, it doesn't seem like, you know, Kirk should have a chance. And so, as they're talking about it, Kirk makes the lunge, and who's that guy? Wait a minute. What? Who are these guys? That's Kirk and Khan? Really? So. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, the guy that, at least the guy that's Khan looks halfway decent, but the guy that's Kirk, I mean, that does not look anything like him. <sighs> yeah, a lot of LSD back then. Augments are the strongest human beings of Star Trek. Of course, they're overpowered by Borg and soon androids. True. Uh, and, and according to uh, what we see in this particular episode, uh, the Khan is roughly five times the strength of a normal human. Dr. McCoy notes that he could lift two grown men with one arm. And so Khan is ridiculously strong. And so, uh, oh yes, uh, the, the Admiral Quinn versus uh, Riker fight. That's definitely a classic, Ricky. Um but yeah, the uh, but the con thing, and the the mirror mirror fight is still my favorite though, just because of fat flabby Uhura. I love that. I just think it's so funny to think that that is what they really thought. What if you were Nichelle? I mean, because you guys know, I, I I voted Nichelle as being the second hottest chick of all of Star Trek, and that's what they give you for a body double. How do you feel about that? I mean, really, they just oh man. Admiral Quinn, medicine woman. <laughs> Anti-triggers. Triples versus Porgs. Who wins? Who's the... 
worst for the health of the spaceship. Well, Porgs win the fight between the two of them because unlike Tribbles, Porgs actually have limbs. And so I think that and are more mobile. And so I think the Porgs would definitely win. Uh, Klingons are two times stronger than human. Vulcans are three. Augments are five. Borg are somewhere between six and eight. And soon androids are ten plus. Okay, I don't know if any of that is canon other than that the Augments are five was established in Space Seed. Uh, but I, other than that, I don't know. That double for here is an insult. Absolutely, Captain George, it really is. And that's the thing. I, if Michelle Nicholas... I, I never met her at a con or anything, but if I did, I would, I would have to say, you know, I don't know if you remember this, but I got to ask you, how did you feel about the person that was your stunt double in Space Seed? Because that's, uh, Junie says, got to go, got to catch those these. I do too. It is after midnight here and I got to get up and figure out what the heck I'm going to do for a video tomorrow since I can't do a video that's a review of Predator, which was my whole plan. <sighs> Uh, was the uh, Uhura double a man? I believe it was. If you look at the whole fight, I think that is uh, just an overweight black dude. And that's just... Uh, did I, what did I say? I, I, yes, I did mean mirror, mirror, but I don't know what I said. But if I said something else, I apologize. All right, guys. Thank you all for being the absolute best crowd on YouTube. I truly do appreciate it. Uh, but I do, unfortunately, need to... Uh, you know, call it a night. Uh, Enderman says, Data said somewhere that my duranium skeletal structure makes me 10 times stronger than a normal human. Okay. Well, you said 10 plus, so then in that case, you could just say, well, 10. Was Predator bad? Don't know. The show got canceled, and so I went to the theater. We sat there for an hour and a half and didn't get to watch the movie. So that really sucked. All right, guys. Take care. <laughs>
Hey, you want to learn about Jesus? There's no such thing as hooker client confidentiality. <laughs> oh, that is definitely a classic. Uh, reality, in all seriousness, no thank you. I do appreciate the support to the channel because every little bit does indeed help. And uh, I hope to eventually get myself to a position where I can do this full time. So you guys support absolutely helps me get in that direction. All right, guys, have a wonderful rest of your whatever it happens to be. The Anti Trekker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. Something better? <laughs> Josh, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. And I love those little $1 animations that he made. Sorry, Andy Tracker, but number nine for anyone. No, no need to apologize. I appreciate it. I truly do. And oh, look at that. Thomas decided to do the same thing at the same time. And, and just for that, I'm going to throw the, even though Thomas threw a buck 99 in because he's much more generous than the rest of you for some reason. But I'm also going to say. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> and so Thomas says he'll change his to number four then. You got it, Thomas. So first though, all right, Enderman, uh, I hope you're ready for this. I now pronounce you man and turd. You may now kiss. Joshua, what are you doing? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I'm definitely not making you kiss law. I repeat, I am not making you kiss law. I'm definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> and so, so since, since uh, that one was taken, let's do number four. Ah, uh, the sentimental one. I do like that one. Uh, it's the only one of the Super Chat rewards that Mrs. Anti Trekker actually calls adorable. Um, all right, guys. Thank you so much, Thomas and Josh. Thank you especially. I do appreciate the support. And you have a wonderful rest of your night. Oh, and real quick, sorry. Jay, I'll answer that question because I asked Joshua the same question. Why did he say these shorts are dying on the wall? And so he says to him that was kind of an inside joke that... Uh, look at how the, the Super Chat rewards, the quality of them has just been going downhill. And I said, Joshua, your animation skills are getting better all the time. And I think you guys would agree that he is just really improving every single time he does one of these new animations. I mean, if you look at and compare like the Super Turds or that one with, uh, you know, that we just did with me and Lore Kissing, comparing that to back when he first started, it's like, wow. So, yeah. Gandalf versus Count Dooku. Um, Enderman, I would probably have to give that to Gandalf uh, because Dooku, uh, his only real trick is lightning. But I think Gandalf with a straight up sword would just kill him. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs>
the Anti Tracker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. And Reality throws another couple bucks in there. It says, Reminder, September 30th, round dinner time. Um, all right, so you're going to come through a little bit later in the day. That's cool. Um, but yeah, make sure that you keep me posted as far as things happen. Um, as far as I know, my schedule should still be fine on September 30th. I do know that officially my new schedule starts in October, so I'm hoping they don't screw it up like saying, oh, well, September 30th, we're going to alter your schedule. Uh, hopefully it doesn't do anything like that, but I will let you know if that happens. In the meantime, you want number 10, which means looks like I'm going to have to play number 10 for you because, you know, that's kind of the whole point. What's up, guys? Welcome to The Lore Reloaded. I am The Lore Reloaded, your wondrous host. What the f You're so smoke. bad that when you come on screen, people don't drink. They punch themselves in the dick for five straight minutes. <laughs> All right, guys. Once again, thank you all. You are the best. You really are. And take care. the anti-tracker we will return to your scheduled programming shortly or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties <laughs> Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 